Hi, I'm Ryan Poliniak, Customer Account Manager at Western Computer. Today, Microsoft Dynamics NAV Solution Architect Meher Malki will show how to track opportunities and sales cycles in Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2016 CRM. Thank you, Ryan. What you see here is Dynamics NAV 2016. Drill through our department's menu, sales and marketing, and over to the marketing section. Here we'll find our opportunities with a list of all the open opportunities. Let's go ahead and create an opportunity from scratch. You notice a wizard comes up stepping through the process. So let's give this a quick description of this opportunity. Opportunity. And we can define the date of the opportunity as well as a priority. We'll keep this at a normal priority. We've specified a contact that's involved with this opportunity, and contacts are important because we can create hooks for contacts, and we'll see how all that ties in in a bit. So here I've chosen David as my contact. I could specify a salesperson that's involved. I'll go ahead and choose myself, and define a sales cycle code. So let's take a minute to talk about these sales cycle codes. Depending on the nature of your organization, you can have different types of sales cycle codes to define opportunities. Each sales cycle can have different stages. So here, for example, we're looking at an extra large customer or a large account. If I review the stages for this particular sales cycle, you'll find that the cycle has five steps or five stages for this particular cycle. Let's review another one, this first large account. We'll review the stages behind that and notice this one may be a little more involved and has about seven steps. These are configurable by you. You can define as many steps as you'd like throughout your process with a different percent completed for each of these steps. For this example, we're going to go ahead and use this first time large account. Sales cycle within this opportunity. I'm going to continue to step through this wizard. And the next series of questions allow me to track an opportunity back to a campaign so that I can clock the ROI of a particular campaign that I may have currently running. And I can also have the opportunity created for a contact link segment. We're not going to do that here today. This next window allows me to start defining information about this opportunity. Should I activate the first stage of that sales cycle that we saw a minute ago, Upon completion, absolutely save me a step. What is the estimated sales value for this opportunity? Let's go ahead and say this is a $10,000 value. And what are the chances of success for this opportunity? So I would say that this opportunity has, let's say, a 75% chance of success. And I need to define what is my close date for this opportunity. Working in the demo system here, my date is set out about a year. So I'm going to frame this out for a year. Typically, what we'll find our customers do here is based on how long their sales cycle is, they'll predetermine an estimated close date. So in some cases, you may have a shorter sales cycle of a couple of weeks. And in other cases, you may have a year-long sales cycle to close an opportunity. So again, this is going to be different based on the industry you're in. So anyway, here I'm just going to go ahead and choose a random date out in the future. And notice there's no more screen, but I cannot click Next anymore. However, I can go ahead and click Finish. And it went ahead and created this test opportunity for me right here. At a glance, I can see all the details right across the line. Or I can come in here and go ahead and edit this particular opportunity. Let's talk about some things that we see here within this window. Notice that there's a sales document type here. What we can do is we can link the sales quote to an opportunity and have the estimated value of the opportunity be linked back to that sales quote. So if that was something I wanted to do, I can just choose quote here and define what my sales quote number is right through this particular drop down here. We're not going to do that for this particular opportunity. However, as you can see, it's just a couple quick clicks. Let's take a look at some more things that you can do around opportunities. If we click on this navigate button here, we can create to-dos around opportunities. And as you may already know, to-dos are reminders in the future for you to do something. In other words, follow up on the opportunity. So you can create a series of to-dos and have them land in your calendar for the future. So if your sales cycle lends you to reach out to your prospects once every month, you can put that schedule directly into your calendar from here. You can review any interaction log entries that have happened with this particular opportunity or for this particular contact. 
this is also going to give you the 360 degree view of that contact. Under the Actions tab here, what you have is you have the ability to, again, assign the sales quote, like we were talking about earlier, or show the sales quote, and now I'll just bring it up on the screen for you. We can also create a new opportunity from here, but what we're going to focus on is going to be the update and the close of this opportunity. As you know, we've created an opportunity, and it has seven sales cycles. The sales cycle has seven stages to it, and what you'll find here is we have already activated the first stage. We have the dates all squared away, both the change date, that's the date we changed or created the opportunity, and the estimated close date for this opportunity. So based on these dates, I'm showing that this opportunity is about a four-week opportunity. Again, the values that we entered in up front are all here. So as this opportunity progresses, we're going to go ahead and update the opportunity. And upon clicking update, what you'll find is we're presented with another wizard. This makes the management of these opportunities foolproof. You just follow along with what the wizard is asking you to do. Here it's asking us, how do we want to update the opportunity? Do we want to move it to the next stage? Do we want to take it back to the first or previous or jump to particular stages? For the sake of this demo, I'm just going to go ahead and advance to the very next stage and click Next. Here you'll see that we're defining again what is that sales cycle stage that we're in. So we were in the first stage prior, we're advancing to the next stage, and here we are going to the second stage. And what it takes this particular change, so I'm just going to advance this by one day, just so that we have some different dates that we're working with. I went ahead and clicked on Next, took me to the next section of the wizard that is asking me to validate or update any of this information. So here, based on what I'm seeing, the value of the opportunity hasn't changed. However, now I'm a little more confident. We're better than 75% chance of success. We're at 80% chance of success at this point. So I went ahead and advanced that to 80%, and it's allowing me to estimate a new close date. I'm going to go ahead and leave the close date as is, and notice I can't click next to the wizard anymore. I can just go ahead and finish this wizard out. Upon doing so, what you'll find is it went ahead and advanced my opportunity to the next stage. I see it here that it's on stage two. I see that this is the active line that I'm on. What is the date of the change, the estimated close? And of course, all the values are still here. It shows my percent completed, my chance of success, and the probability for winning this opportunity. I can go on and update this seven times to get us to the end of the opportunity, or I can just go ahead and close the opportunity directly from here. So let's go ahead and see what the close of the opportunity looks like. I click on the close button up top, and I'm presented with yet another wizard, foolproof again. So here, what it's asking us to do is define why we're closing this opportunity, and ultimately, you're going to close the opportunity for one of two reasons. You either won it or you lost it. So let's go ahead and choose the fact that we won this opportunity, so I'm going to choose one and step through the wizard. Advances me to my next screen, and here you will find another series of questions asking why did we win? What is the reason for closing this opportunity? And notice all these reasons here have a type of one. These are configurable by you as well. You can define what you want each of these reason codes to be so that later you could track your measure of success based on the reason code. Conversely, on the loss side, you can track different reasons why you lost an opportunity and work on those areas as well. So here, for argument's sake, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say we won because of the best price, it's an easy one. We can define the closing date of the opportunity. So if you recall, when we set up this opportunity, we entered in the estimated close date. And here, we're defining the actual close date. Now, these dates are very important and sometimes are leveraged for metrics or KPIs to see how close we are getting to those dates as well as the sales dollar amount. Many sales managers leverage these to their advantage to be able to see what their pipeline looks like. So having accurate, viable data here becomes very important. So I'm going to go ahead and show that I'm off by a couple of weeks on the closing date of this opportunity, but I'm going to nail the dollar amount properly. I have an interesting checkbox here that allows me to cancel any open to-dos for this opportunity. If you recall a little bit earlier, we mentioned that you can create to-dos for an opportunity to remind you when to follow up with a particular opportunity or this particular contact, if you will, for various steps within your sales cycle. But if you're closing the opportunity, those become no longer needed. 
So in this case, I am going to go ahead and click on cancel any of the old to dos because I don't need to do those final ones. Notice once again, my next button is grayed out. I can no longer advance next. I have to force to finish. Upon clicking on finish, what you'll find is my opportunity gets updated and now it enters into a read-only mode. I can no longer make any changes here. Some of the things that got updated on this opportunity is our status, showing that it's one. We see a checkbox flag that this opportunity is closed and we updated the close date. We see the progression or the life cycle of the opportunity through the lines here. And we see that our active line is the fact that this opportunity has been won. We made it back to sales stage zero, which means we're complete. And we track the date change and the estimated close dates, the dollar values, percent probability, success, and so on. So here we're going to go ahead and just click OK and close out of that opportunity window. That concludes today's video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on all latest video releases. Thanks for watching.